So in the instructions for uh, part one, it says for uh, seven and nine, remember it's just uh, seven to 33 odds is part one, um, you're going to find the domain. So remember, the domain just counts on what do we see in our denominator. So like for seven, get that in factored form, set each of the factors equal to zero. We don't care if they have a matching factor on top or bottom, that won't affect our domain. We have to take out negative one and positive one from our domain. So the answer to seven Um, we would use everything up to negative 1, skip it, up to positive 1, skip it, and then keep going. So our domain goes from negative 1, negative infinity to negative 1, negative 1 to 1, and 1 to infinity. So if we were to look at this graph, we should see three pieces. Um, there would be a hole at negative 1, and there would be an asymptote at positive 1. So that's number seven. Now, 11 through 19, we're pretty much doing the same thing, except we're kind of just going one more step. What we want to do is it says find the domain, um, vertical asymptotes and horizontal asymptotes. So I'm going to list the holes as well. I, I would like to do problem um, 17 with you. So first step, get it in factored form. So x plus 5 and x minus 5 is the factorization of our denominator. That will tell us that we are missing negative 5 and positive 5. So do your domain first before you contemplate what those points are really doing. So you'll notice that I have a gap here at negative 5 and a gap here at positive 5. Okay, now why is there a gap? Well, you'll notice that the plus 5s, um, x plus 5s, are a matching factor in top and bottom. So at x equals negative 5, we have a hole. At x equals positive 5, since there isn't a match on the top, we have a vertical asymptote. And then the other question was, is what was the horizontal asymptote? Well, if the power on top is less than the power on the bottom, see that, that degree is higher in the bottom, the horizontal asymptote is always zero. Now, let me find one where they match. Let's go to 19 for a minute. I want to do the horizontal asymptote for 19. So 11 has a horizontal asymptote of 0, 13 has a horizontal asymptote of 0, 15, 17, they all have horizontal asymptotes at zeros because the degree in the denominator is higher than the degree in our numerator. But if we look at 19, the degree in the top is an x, the degree in the bottom is a 1, an x, and so they match. Well, what do we do when that happens? There, the horizontal asymptotes, we just get to use the coefficients that are attached to those x. So it's just going to be y equals, we, uh, for our horizontal asymptote, we're going to use the coefficient stuck to our x on top, the coefficient stuck to our x on the bottom, that's our horizontal asymptote. Okay. So we, on the ends, this particular graph for 19 heads to a height instead of 0, like most of them do, it heads to a height of negative two-thirds. So kind of interesting one that one that does that. Uh, let's talk about x and y intercepts. Um, 21 and 23. Um, let's do um, let's do 21 together. Get it in factored form. If any of the factors on top match the factors on the bottom, remember that is a whole. Cross it out before you answer the question of where are the x and y intercepts.
Where are our x-intercepts? Well, our x-intercepts are where the top equals 0. So the top 1, it, now we're just going to use the reduced version. The top equals 0. 1 will never equal 0. So there are none. There is not an x-intercept for this graph. It never hits the x-axis. Let's take a look at the y-intercept. We're just going to plug in 0 and see what happens. Again, for the rest of the problem, we can use that simplified version. Once we take out the whole from our thinking, from our domain, we never have to deal with it ever again. So we can use that simplified version from now on. And we get 1 over negative 1, which is negative 1. So we hit the x-axis nowhere. We hit the y-axis just at the point negative 1. So remember, the x-intercept is where the top equals 0, 1 simplified. The y-intercept is where the bottom equals um, 0. I'm not where the bottom equals 0, where the whole thing, where you plug in 0. Please. Would Sean Miller please report to guidance, please? Sean Miller, please report to the guidance office. Thank you. So that's what you want to do for 21 and 23. Let's talk about 25, 27, and 29. It says describe the local and the end behavior. Um, local behavior is our vertical asymptotes. End behavior is our horizontal asymptotes. The only difference now is we're going to use that little arrow notation. Only difference. We're still going to find what's our vertical asymptote, what's our horizontal asymptote, and then we'll describe um, what goes from there. So let's do uh, let's do 25. So it's completely factored. No factor on top is exact match on the bottom. So we don't have to worry about a hole in there. But there is a vertical asymptote when 2x plus 1 equals 0. Solve. So there is a vertical asymptote at negative 1 half. We're going to have to describe what happens at negative 1 half. Let's talk about our horizontal asymptote. This is one where that degree on top matches the degree on the bottom. So we just use the coefficients 1 over 2. So um, let's use our arrow notation. And this is where I want you to use decimals. For this section, please use decimals. So um, We're going to put that equation into decimals. So uh, x divided by 2x plus 1. And we're going to look at two places. And this is what you can do. See exactly what we got here? We got y equals 1 half and x equals negative 1 half. Type those in in separate lines. So we're going to type in x equals negative 1 half. We're going to type in y equals positive. And maybe uh, only show one at a time because it gets to be a lot. Okay. Now, let's deal with the vertical asymptote x equals negative 1 half. As we approach um, negative 1 half from the right, what's our y doing? As we approach negative 1 half from the left, what's our y doing? Well, as you can see, as we approach it from the left, and I'm going to scroll my finger. You can see my finger moving on the graph. Hopefully it will let me. As we approach it from the, that's from the left, <laughs> from the right, you can see we're going down to negative infinity. So from the right, that's the little plus sign. We're going down. And then as we approach it from the left, our asymptote is going up to positive infinity. Okay, so now let's take that asymptote off, and let's look at the other asymptote. We'll, we'll continue this one. For that asymptote, the uh, ends are going to infinity. So uh, the x is going to negative infinity. The y is going to 1 half. The x is going to positive infinity the y is also going to 1 half. 
So as you approach a vertical asymptote, you're going to use that plus or minus notation. As you approach a horizontal asymptote, that's your x going to be plus or minus infinity, left and right. Okay? So um, that's how you do 25, 27, and 29. And then the last little section here, 31, 33 says to find the slant asymptote. Now, how do we know there's a slant asymptote? Well, if the higher power is one on top compared to the, the bottom, there's a slant asymptote, and this is how you find it. We're just going to divide the top by the bottom, and we're going to see what happens. And so... Um, we get 2x plus 4, and so our slant asymptote is y equals 2x plus 4. Pretty straightforward there. It's just we do not care what the remainder is. It is just without the remainder. Um, what is our, our quotient, that 2x plus 4? So that's the algebra of everything. So that is part one. So there you go.